peeled off about a hundred and thirty thousandths off from it, trued up the outside edge, and uh, it's, it's running pretty true. I see a little bit of a needle wiggle there, but good enough, I think. So over to the mill now, and we'll have to lay out those holes and drill the holes. All right, the part's out of the lathe and over here on the bench, and I think what I'm going to use to find these the centers of these holes is our old trusty center finders again. I think I'm going to chuck them up in the mill uh, to help me hold them nice and vertical, and then just use the pressure of the mill to make our dimples in the aluminum. Uh, two different sizes, one for the threaded holes, and then one for the non-threaded holes. We're going to oversize these holes anyways, uh, slightly. As, we, as this QD coupling gets drawn down into that taper and it squeezes on the output shaft of the motor, these holes are going to change position a little bit. Those bolts are going to need to have a little bit of wiggle room in there. So we're going to upsize them uh, slightly. All right, we're checked up here in the mill. And I'm just going to use, like I said, the mill to, to keep us vertical and just put a little bit of pressure on there to make our, our dimple hopefully right dead center in the hole. All right, we'll do the same with the, uh, the larger center finder, and then we'll uh, try to rig this thing up on the turntable again to drill those holes. Yeah, this is unscripted, and I don't always get it right the first time, but I'm back over here on the lathe. I've decided not to drill these holes on the mill yet because the holes have got to go all the way through this piece and into this piece once we we mate these two together so it doesn't make any sense to drill these holes yet what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim this down pretty close to this black line again not a critical dimension we're just shaving weight I've already dial indicated this and got it back to within about a half a thousandth of an inch so it's they're dialed into the lathe uh, to this four jaw and now we can just uh, whittle away at it until we get down to uh, pretty close to the black line there. And then we'll be able to swap the thing around and work on the other end. All right, we've got the piece turned around in the four jaw. And you can see... The jaw has been making some pretty good uh, indentations in this stock and we weren't really that concerned about it before because we're going to turn this back down. But now that we've got it flipped around in, in the finished uh, outside here, or it's close, pretty close to finished, I went ahead and put some soft jaws in there which is really just a, uh, some pieces of copper pipe that I've cut and uh, flattened out and sandwiched those between the jaws and the aluminum which then protects the aluminum. I've got it dialed in uh, it's pretty darn close it's a little bit of a you know needle bump around a little bit just because of, of those jaw marks in it but as you can see it's it's running pretty true maybe a half a thousand it might be might be a thousandth of an inch if you go real slow it's pretty darn close it's close enough for for our work so I'll go ahead and uh, true this up or, or actually start turning it down and uh, we get down to really close to where uh, the other side of it is we're going to have to stop and, and take some more measurements and figure out what kind of diameter we want and, and the length of it, that's the, that shoulder that's going to step into the other piece. I know I'm not explaining that very well but it's clear in my mind <laughs> so uh, it'll become clearer in your mind. Uh, as we as we work through it. I had another thought here. This thing should be centered up in reference to this center hole. That's what's going to keep it true. So I've set up a different dial indicator here, one with a ball on the end of it, and it, it's got a pivot point, and it, it registers or it runs on the inside of that hole. And I, I had to work the, the jaws some more take out about, it was showing about six or seven thousandths run out on it and now it's down to about, well the inside of that hole is not perfectly smooth but it, it's pretty darn close right there so I think that's the way we're going to go with it for now.
All right, well, we have this piece turned down to two inches. And uh, I think what we'll do now is we'll chuck it up back in the lathe on this end of the piece. Just knock this, this flange off is all we're going to do, just trim this flange off. We'll chuck this piece up in the lathe and we'll open up this hole to just shy of two inches. Once we, we get it opened up, take it back out of the lathe, we'll warm this piece up, chill this piece, and then press the two of them together. And then there'll be pretty much one piece. We'll back that up with these holes. As we drill these holes, they'll go all the way through both pieces and really, really hold it nice and tight. We were set back up on the lathe with our flange piece. Uh, I had to go back to the four jaw chuck and uh, reverse the jaws so we could capture it from the outside. I got the uh, soft jaws in there as well and I dialed it in and uh, hey, how about this for a rookie? I think that's probably close enough, huh? Well, now we're going to bore this hole out and we'll go up, uh, we'll just drill it out with an inch and an eighth, my biggest drill bit, and then uh, use a boring bar and bore it on out till we get two inches or just shy of two inches. And we're going to have to be very, very careful as we work our way towards that final dimension because we, we, we need an interference fit here uh, about two to three thousandths of an inch uh, interference is what we're looking for. All right, uh, Mike in this <clears throat> one more time, taking one last check of it to make sure that we bore that hole out to the proper size. Like I said earlier, it's a 1.999. That's pretty darn close to two inches. And we want to be just shy of that with, with that hole. So we'll, we'll take this, we'll zero this caliper out and use that for the nominal dimension. Start working the hole up bigger. As we get closer to the two inch mark, we're going to probably come back and forth. I'll probably use uh, something a little more precise than this caliper, probably a micrometer and uh, some inside hole gauges. And we're going to see if we can get this thing uh, right on the mark. All right, it looks like a, we got about 820 thousandths to peel out of there. Hey folks, sorry I lost you there. I ran out of memory, didn't realize it. Uh, we've been working on opening up this hole. We're real close to our final dimension here. I've been using my carbide uh, insert bit here. It's been doing a great job of just peeling the uh, material out of there. We're real close to our final dimension. I'm going to take a couple of measurements with our telescoping gauge here and check it with our uh, micrometer and make sure we're real close or real accurate. We want to be within about three to four thousandths under the dimension of, of this piece. So we'll have a, a press fit in here. So let me take a few dimensions. It's going to take both hands here and I'll probably have to move the camera, but I'll be right back with you. I think we're going to be able to get this out with one final pass and uh, then we'll be ready to, uh, to heat things up and squeeze them together. Meow. All right, so 19 thousandths is what it's reading, and we're going to try to get about uh, 15 thousandths off of that, so uh, leave us about a 4 thousandths interference fit. That's what we're going to shoot for. So right now I'm going to peel off um, probably another 5 or 6 thousandths and take another reading and go from there. Uh, I have let this sit for a while so it's nice and cool and should, we should be getting a better reading with it uh, nice and cool. After I, I cut all that material out of there it was pretty hot which tends to kind of you know stretch things out a little bit so uh, important to let your, uh, let your piece cool down to get a real accurate reading. All right, I think we're there. It's reading about two to three thousandths over. It looks like it's it's right there. I'm going to put a nice chamfer on this edge, not only to help us get it started, but also 
just in case there's a little bit. I mean, it looks like a pretty tight corner there in that uh, in that corner, but uh, just to relieve it a little bit. So uh, let's chamfer it. I'm also probably going to uh, take a facing run across this just to, to true things up here to make sure that uh, we get a good seat uh, when, we, when we press this in. All right, here's the setup. I have the press up here ready to go. The flange is in the oven. It's up to about 450 degrees and the uh, cup is in the, a bath of ice water. So I'm planning on bringing the flange over, heating it with the torch, bringing it up to around 550 or so, maybe 600 degrees, and then sliding the two of them underneath the press and squeezing them together. Well, I guess we didn't need the press. Hey, well, you know you got lucky when it drops together like that. It couldn't have been any better. I think the uh, the plate was was hotter than I thought it was. Uh, my thermometer, my digital Chinese infrared thermometer, was kind of all over the charts. Probably uh, had plenty of heat on it. I did mic the hole or put the calipers on it you know, before I set it up in the press and got ready to drop the cup in. And it was showing that it opened up about... Uh, four or five thousandths of an inch. So heating it does work. And as you could tell from, from the video, cup dropped right in and uh, it's in there, it's, it's stuck. So it's not going anywhere, especially when we, we drill these holes all the way through and, and put the bolts through. Uh, that's definitely gonna hold it together. So we're looking pretty good. The next step will be to drill these holes We'll set it up in the mill, drill all six of these holes, plus two more, which will help us remove the, the QD coupling if we need to. Let me get that set up and we'll press on from there. Hey, one little note here. Uh, you know when you found true love is when your wife comes out and cleans your lathe so you don't have to. All right, here's a setup on the mill. We've got eight holes to drill here. Uh, we'll use the uh, starter bit, of course, and uh, work our way around the, the circle of 360 degrees and just pre-start all these holes. And then we'll come in. Um, we actually got two different size holes to drill here. One for a quarter inch bolt and the other one for a 5 16 bolt. And we'll um, wind up pre-drilling all six of the holes with the quarter inch drill bit and then we're going to open up three of those holes to a, a 2164 so that's going to give us a little bit of play you know as we talked about before that qd coupling needs to squeeze in so we need a little bit of play on those quarter inch bolts so we'll open that up to 2164 so that'll give us about 35 thousandths on those three holes and then the 5 16 holes we'll pre-drill with a quarter inch just to save some time from changing bits. And then we'll come back in with a 1964 drill bit on those three holes. That's gonna open up those holes about 45 thousandths and uh, give us that room for that QD coupling to squeeze in. And then we're gonna drill two more holes um, between two of these holes, which we'll drill with a number seven drill bit so we can run a quarter 20 tap in there that's going to help us push that QD coupling out from the back side. Uh, once we draw that coupling in there, it gets pretty tight. And to, to push it back out, if we tap some holes in one of these holes, we can use the same bolts that we draw the coupling in with to then push the coupling back out. You'll see how that works uh, if you're not following uh, here in a little bit. But again, I'll probably just... Uh, Fast forward you through this, you can, you can see the process, but uh, hey, you've seen it enough. It's uh, standard drilling from here. All right, I'm gonna start with this number seven drill, but it's the smallest one. Uh, so I might as well drill all eight holes with this number seven and then step up from there. But when we finish with the number, with this drill bit, 
this hole and this hole will be done. We won't, uh, besides for chamfering them, we won't touch it again with the drill bit. So uh, help me remember that so I don't run a bigger drill bit in there. All right, well, number seven drill bit run through all eight holes. I put these, just dropped some screws in these two holes to, to remind me not to, to drill those up anymore. The remaining six holes will get this quarter inch drill bit. That's just to open them up a little bit more. We still have the final two drill bits to go for or for the proper size. But uh, most of the hard drilling is done. That initial drill takes a lot of work, a lot of uh, stopping and cleaning the flutes out. Uh, it, but it takes out the majority of the material. So this, this ought to go pretty fast. Yeah, about three and a half minutes to go around drill those six holes. A lot quicker than the first go around. All right, this is the final size for the quarter inch bolts. I dropped some temporary screws in, in these holes as well, just to remind me not to drill those holes. So those will be for the 5 16 bolts, and that'll be the last drill bit size, the uh, 1964. So this is a uh, 21 64 drill bit. Here we go. All right, we're all drilled, and the only thing we have left to do is a couple of taps. We're gonna run the tap into those number seven holes that we created to, to push the QD coupling off. And I'll run the tap in as far as I can. Again, I'll use the same method I use for tapping these holes. I'll get it started here with the mill, get it nice and straight, then I'll pull it out and hand tap it the rest of the way. Now there's no way we're going to be able to go all the way through this two and five eighths worth of material. So we'll go the depth of the tap and then I'll have to flip this thing back over and clearance drill from the other side down about uh, well just deep enough to get past this starter thread here on the tap. Uh, that'll allow us to, to slide a bolt in from the other side engage those threads and then thread the bolt in until it starts pushing on the face of the QD coupling. I'll explain that a little bit later. Most of you guys probably uh, got it figured out, but that's the plan and uh, here we go. Hey, we're almost done. Uh, everything uh, looks real good. The QD coupling fits real well. Our bolt holes are, are drilled, cleaned up, tapped, and then ready to go on this end. We do have to do a little bit more work on the lathe. We're gonna have to chuck it back up in the fore jaw and center it and then trim out some material, a little bit of a clearance for the bolt heads that'll fit in here. So we'll have to whittle it on down to give us enough clearance uh, for all these bolt heads. These, these two holes here we won't have to worry about, although they'll get clearanced as well just because of the rest of them but those are the holes that we made for uh, for pushing that QD coupling out uh, let me see if I got a long enough bolt um, maybe I guess I don't but the idea on those of course was you know, we clearance drilled them there the threads start and if we had a long enough bolt you would see that if you if you're trying to remove this QD coupling out of here after it's been tightened down and, and the taper is taken, you know, and squeezed on down, it'll be pretty tight and be hard to remove. But all you would have to do would be to run a long enough bolt in there. It would start pushing on the face, on, on the back side of, of this or this flange, and then push that coupling. You need to do a couple of threads here, or a couple of twin turns here, and a couple of turns here. And eventually that would push that QD coupling off of there, out of that taper anyways. All right, so back over to the lathe, set the fore jaw back up, and uh, let's, let's cut the clearance out of here. It just dawned on me that a lot of you folks may not know exactly what the difference is between a three-jaw chuck and a four-jaw chuck. The three-jaw chuck is just like any other chuck that's on a drill press. Once you use the key to tighten it up, and when you do that, it, 
it squeezes all three jaws in at the same time. It, it's got a scroll on the back and it squeezes them all in at the same time, which is great. It's nice and quick, but it's not as precise or you can't really put eccentric parts in it. With the four jaw chuck, you're adjusting each jaw individually. And it, it takes a little bit more time to set up, but it gives you more options to, to chuck stuff up and to center stuff. You put this part in the three jaw, tighten it down, and whatever run out you have in that center hole is what you have. There's no way adjusting it. So the four jaw gives us the opportunity to move these jaws back and forth and you get the run out very close or you know next to nothing. So you can see I've got it set in the four jaw with the soft jaws in here so we don't damage the outside of it. And it's pushed up tight against the jaws. And I've got the dial indicator set to uh, to measure the run out on the inside hole there which we've as we've turned this thing we've always referenced that inside hole so this thing should run pretty true now you can see that there's well let's see there is well, I just put that in the wrong position let's find the bottom there and zero out our dial indicator so right now we just roughly put in the the four jaw there's about 42 thousandths worth of run out in it now i'll i'll do this off camera because if you want to really know how this is done go to the, one of the guys you know a bomb 79 he's a master at this they actually have competitions on who can true up a four jaw the quickest it takes me a little bit of time um, you know sometimes I move it the wrong way you get the wrong results on the dial indicator have to go back and, and undo it or, or push it the other direction so it, it takes me a while to do it so I won't do it on camera um, it just use up way too many zeros and ones so let me get this thing squared away and I'll bring you back in and show you the results and then we'll get to, uh, get to turning all right, didn't take a whole lot of tweaking on it, but I got it within, it's about a thousandths out, but we're really, we're not turning anything with alignment. We're just going to make some clearance passes here for these bolt heads. So really it's all uh, just for practice or uh, maybe even balance for this, this assembly. But we're, uh, we're pretty good shape, but let me get the tools set up and we'll get to cutting. All right, we should be ready to go here. I got a brazed in carbide bit in here. I'm gonna try to just come in the center here and then ease back uh, these corners. It, it gets pretty rough when you're not turning a solid piece when you got segments like this. So I'm gonna take it nice and easy and just uh, try to ease these corners out. Once we get those out of the way, then we'll be able to come in here and we'll have to plunge in with a different bit and and kind of plunge in and then cut back and forth. So uh, let's get these corners out of the way. We're gonna go up right up to the line here, just a, a real rough dimension. I used a Sharpie and the head of one of these bolts to, to kind of give us guidance on where we need to go. All right, I didn't like the way that tool was cut. And remember, the only thing that's holding these two pieces together right now is the the friction or the uh, the shrink fit that we put you know by put in there by heating cutting it undersize and heating and shrinking it together so don't want to put a whole lot of tool pressure on here also don't want to get this thing real hot to have those two pieces come apart I, I think they're solid but you know hey better to err on the side of caution we got the uh, high speed steel bit in here I just honed it a little bit got it sharp and uh, let's see how it cuts All right, we got it all cleaned up. It's looking pretty good. I just made a high-speed steel bit to uh, to plunge in here and work back and forth and clean out uh, the width of our screw or bolt heads. So this is a, a delicate process. It's going to kind of scrape the material out of there. It doesn't cut very well when you plunge in like that, but I'll take it nice and slow, work it back and forth and uh, create that groove that we need for the bolt head clearance. Stop. 
cutting real good. Let me see if I can work on the end of that bit a little bit more and get it to cut a little better. it's done everything seems to fit well bolts are in there those are not the proper bolts I need some longer ones up to take some measurements and order some longer ones let's see let's put the this line back on it still fits nicely we can bolt that on actually the the sequence of, of putting this thing together will be to to put the PD coupling together first and get it all trued up on the output shaft of the of the motor and then go ahead and bolt the splines on here and then slide the engine in, or the uh, motor and the transmission together pretty simple process I don't know what this weighs I could weigh it I think it's going to be significantly lighter than a clutch assembly I've had a couple of comments about clutches and whether to clutch or not to clutch and hey that's a decision that you have to make uh, I, I wrestled back and forth with it for quite some time uh, saw a lot of videos some people telling you to install a clutch some people not you know saying you don't need to I decided not to I can always back up pull this thing back out and uh, re you know I'd have to do this machining work over again the adapter plate would be fine I think I could I could install a clutch if I need to down the road. So I'm going to try it without. Hopefully it works fine and um, now I won't have any shifting problems. Maybe when this thing gets done, we'll do a video on on how it drives and how it shifts without a without a clutch. So that's it for now. In episode three. Hopefully I can squeeze this all into into one episode. I found out with episode two that. I had too much video and couldn't squeeze it all into to one, so that's the reason why I had to break it up in part A and part B. Uh, hopefully I'll get this one all in, in one video. Uh, we'll see how it goes in the editing. Once again, folks, I appreciate you watching, and I hope this helps. Appreciate the comments, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, coming up next will be, uh, I'll do an episode on assembly. <laughs> Oh my goodness! One last, uh, one last appearance from uh, in this episode, anyways, from Jetson. We'll do a video on assembly, and uh, then after assembly, will be that'll probably be a short video. We'll start on the motor mount, and uh, that's going to take some time. So, once again, folks, thanks for watching. Uh, get started on your projects. And hope to hear from you in your comments.